location. Well, <laughs> you being the the Japanese connoisseur, you're you're. I thought you were into bukkake. I, I am, but it, it all starts with a gangbang, and <laughs> it might end with the bukkake. But you got to start somewhere. Is that bigger over there than it is here? Yeah, that's so weird, man. Yeah, it's it's like uh, I mean, I get a, everybody has or not everybody, but you know, people have their different fucking quirks they're into. Yeah, that that one to me is fucking really strange, though. How about the tentacle thing and all that? Are you? I don't even know. About you don't know that. about the tentacles, Matt? Tell them about the tentacles. I don't know about the tentacles. <laughs> I want. I want to hear. I have a don't act like story, you. Story, but I, I really want to know about. We're these. missing all this hot content for the uninformed. Oh no, podcast. we're recording. And it's are we are. Okay, <laughs> it'll be outtakes and B-roll. And awesome, <laughs> Matt. You're getting all this. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Uh, so the tentacles back to the tentacles is it like a furry thing but with octopus or what oh, well octopus have have how many i'm, I'm not good with uh, biology but they have a lot of hands right yeah. or they what do you call hands? those tentacles yeah right so if you had eight hands and you had a hot girl in front of you you'd probably want to use all eight eight hands so i think the fantasy is you know having eight eight hands to do whatever you wanted to do with a hot oh, chick gotcha. but so i mean is that there's four guys then or is it one dude no it's an actual octopus with fucking... a lot of tentacles that like molest girls in, like you're in an octopus costume no like you're an octopus molesting a girl <laughs> like, <laughs> like an octopus molests a girl i i there's like, like they use there. a real octopus yeah that's, that's fucking a whole weird yeah. thing to cupping yeah it's, no shit i mean that, like doesn't that border on like fucking animal cruelty or bestiality like i don't think that's i don't think it's talk. the other it's the octopus actually doing the yeah well, but still i, guess, I mean it's like if a woman blows a horse yeah she's still going to jail for that you're right but in brazil and certain other countries it's okay I mean, it happens Thailand, all the in time. Thailand, anything goes. Right. And in Japan, in fact, there's some fans of that genre as well, from what I've heard. Yeah. I'm confused. <laughs> According to some studies yeah. I've heard. According to people that I know really well that I lived with there. <laughs> I'm confused why if a hot girl blows a horse, why that's <laughs> cruelty. I mean, it's, that bitch should get an award. I mean, cruelty is always in the eye of the beholder, right? I met but, a retired yeah. octopus once. Yeah. Uh, he, was, <laughs> he was smoking a cigarette. Yeah. He was on some yeah, antidepressants. Yeah, and they were looking for some uh, some Viagra or something that would work in the octopus uh, variety. I think they were That's doing some Japanese weird, DNA man. and other type of testing at the time to God, revive what? retired octopuses uh, yeah. from tentacle sex I didn't uh, know that was uh, thing. animation videos. I, again, only what I've heard. We yeah. really need to go to Japan with you yeah. <laughs> for like a week. What, yeah, you, what uh, what part did you live in? I lived in the Tokyo area for the oh, okay. most part, so I was did outside. Did you ever travel Tokyo. much? Like, oh, yeah. To some of the rural the areas? Country, man. Are there rural areas, really? Oh, yeah. Japan's got beautiful rural areas. And the great part about Japan's rural areas is they're all so different, too. And there's Because Japan had a – if you go back to the history of Japan, Japan was um, – uh, uh, you know, it, it, during the feudal period, they were, you know, locked down. There was no interaction with the outside world. They closed their country. And during that time, all these local areas, the, you know, the samurai and all the other history of all this stuff, these local areas developed their own local cultures within the whole Japanese, you know, country. So you think Japanese is very homogenous or very Japanese, but you go to different areas, there's total different ways of speaking, different ways of saying things, different food, even ramen. You know, think about ramen, how many different varieties there are. There's hundreds, maybe thousands of different varieties, mm -hmm. of different ramens based on the different areas of Japan. Mm -hmm. What their local food was, what they grew there, what their flavors they had. Was it hot area where they, you know, where more salt was consumed as opposed to up north where more miso and some of the colder areas. Where so it's really cool, man. There's so much variety within Japan. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, wild, man. It's a great country. I, I've never been Pikachu. there. Pikachu. <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> I, I'd love to go in, there. I've uh, never been. But. Saw him in the airport actually the other day. I mean, they were selling them for. It was, it was on special, buck fifty for. <laughs> Pikachu. You know more about that stuff probably than I do, to be honest with you. I, I, I watch a lot of stupid shit. Not saying it's stupid. It's just it's different. Oh, watch? and the whole black black gum. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I have a black employee, and I shit you not, every time he comes up here. He saw it the first time. He looked at it and he's like, "What the fuck, bro?" I was like, "Man, it's Japanese gum." I said, "They didn't they're out of white white, so I couldn't get any of that." <laughs> Every time he comes here, he pops that in. He said, "This is the gum of my people." <laughs> Look, said, I, I was going to bring you actually today. I got a little gift bag over there for you guys. Well, we were going to save it maybe for the end of this podcast or or mine, my podcast, but I got a couple surprises for you from Japan. I think you're right. going to enjoy. I looked for black black yesterday. There has been a run on the black black Really? It's not available. Oh, sure. Not even on the Zon? Well, um, perhaps on the Zon. I went to the actual traditional Japanese store to get you the traditional non-Zon version the of it. Yeah. That, that, that is the new That is the new tradition is Amazon is everything. Dude, you sold out, huh? <laughs> you freaking sold out. Mike, I didn't think he was, Matt was that easy as a sellout, man. I mean, why do, you think, why do you think we're so tight? You know? I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt, bro, man. Bro, everything look, I can have that shit tomorrow. 
All right, don't rub it in my face, man. I actually went and tried to support a Japanese business that's working hard here in the DFW area. Mitsua, the, the stores, got all the food. And they're completely out. Maybe they John's should put got their it shit on Amazon. What's or that? maybe they should go on Amazon. Uh, maybe they should, huh? I, I would have had, I could have yeah. ordered it yesterday and had it here on time. Yeah. Or they should just get all this shit from Amazon and sell it in their store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mark it up. Yeah, there you go. go. They'll love that. They'll love that strategy. <laughs> exactly. It works for Costco. Uh, sure. Yeah, it did, man. Do you know what I, speaking of Costco, you know, it's funny. When I first moved back from Japan, speaking about Japan and America and all the stuff that I do, I used to get, you know, Costco, you spend money there, right? And you get back the checks at the end of the year, the the, the rewards checks. And then you yeah. had the American Express card and you get the 2% back on it. I used to max those out every single year, thousands and thousands of dollars. And you know why? I would come, I, I moved back from Japan and I realized that they didn't have Rogaine in Japan. You really? know, for the bald guys? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, for the, uh, especially this patch area up here, the a lot of Japanese guys had that. The scolda sack. Is the scolda sack? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good term. I hadn't heard that before. That is great. Well, we wanted to close up some of those Japanese scolda sacks. Uh, scolda sacks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would buy Rogaine. I mean, buy cases and cases of Rogaine and ship it to Japan back in 2000, early 2000s. Made a fortune selling Rogaine to Japanese guys thanks to That's Costco. A trip, man. Yeah. God, well, that's that's like uh, is there a, there's a fucking term for doing that, isn't there? I uh, gray market uh, <laughs> gray marketing Rogaine. <laughs> gray I will tell you every time I walk to the register in Costco back in California, I walk up the and I have cases and cases. I'm no, talking like about you're not even bald, fucker. Of, they said they look at me, people stare at me, and I I always wear a hat, so I take it off. I said. That's why. Works pretty damn good, don't it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> They'd say, like, holy I God. drink the shit. I just bathe in it, man. You got to see my back, I would tell them. <laughs> if you think my head's good, look at my back. <laughs> did you uh, did you ship it over there or take it with you or what? Ship them over express. We had an order-taking service in Japan that would collect the orders, collect the money. Every night, they would they would send over the information. So in the morning, I'd know who had to get Rogaine shipped. So we'd it, express mail service to, to individual fucking, people in Japan, their, their Rogaine subscription. Yeah, that's fucking that's wild. That's crazy. Man. Yeah, and then Costco had to go open in Japan and start selling it there too and just yeah, rip the middleman out of the equation. Out of business. Yeah. Yeah. Damn it, left me fucking high Costco. and dry on Rogaine. That's why you don't sell out to Amazon. That's why. I've, that's why I don't sell. The, that's why you don't sell out to Amazon. That's why you, you. Uh, well, that's why. Hopefully, my hair stays put because I'm not buying another damn Rogaine from 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 those guys ever again. That's you right. can get it on Amazon. I, thank you. I could have it here tomorrow. I want to hear today. Get that shit prime. <laughs> Can't get satisfaction. Everything's fast nowadays, huh? That's what she said. Mm, yeah. That's, it's almost so easy. Yeah. That's. Things used to be harder back in back in our days, huh? That's how I start. That's sex. also I, what she said. I put the vibrator <laughs> by her pillow, <laughs> and I tell her, "I'm gonna finish first. You wanted to marry a winner. That's for you later. <laughs> and if you want to finish, do it yourself." But. Yeah. Um, I'm. I'm. Uh, I like the way you put it that way. Yeah. Texas guys just lay it out there straight, huh? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what she said. That is what she said. That's what she said. I got divorce papers said. yesterday, yeah. but no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to congratulate you, man. You're a you're a daddy. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. a daddy. Little little uh, little boy. Yeah. What what's his name? Maddox. Maddox, Maddox William Holden, or wow. Mad Bill. Mad Bill, huh? Yeah, that's his short name. That's like his Western that. fucking Billy yeah. the Kid name. Does he got a beard yet? Yeah, he does. I pencil Full it beard. on him every <laughs> ZZ Top yeah. style. So I can hit him with a sharpie. Have you not seen a picture of him? I, yeah, that's it. But all little kids look just little scrunched up little little acorns. I mean, they don't. What you know? They all look alike. Don't they? Oh, read that shirt though. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Can, can I can I can I uh, enunciate what his shirt says? Yeah. Your how is it like five day old son is hung like a five year old. Yeah. <laughs> So that came from their uh, the PPF That's installer and window no shit. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I can tell you, I didn't have a shirt like that for my son when he was born. But my son just graduated college, so I want to tell you what yeah. you have to look forward to. My Congratulations! Son, thank you, thank what, you. I just came back uh, from Atlanta. My son graduated from Emory University. What? What in? He's got a business degree as an undergraduate, but he is going on to dental school. So he's going to oh, be, sure. uh, he's going to take a gap year. He got a job at a dental office as a dental assistant. And he's going to go to dental school next year back here in Texas. Yeah, that's um, awesome. And I'm proud of him, man. 22 yeah, yeah. years flies really by good. fast, man. Yeah. Really fast. That's I got a 24-year-old that did all that. And, well, she's 24 now, but yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't look forward to doing it all over again. I do, but I don't, because now I can do it different. Yeah. You know, be, be like, I did this one good with this one. Let's go this way. See how we can fuck <laughs> yeah. this one. Let's up. See if I can go sideways here. Yeah. 
uh, the uh, I guess you learn. You know, we learn from mistakes, right? We learn from things we did right and wrong, and we're supposed to, but mm-hmm. supposed not always, right? Yeah. For for me, the the biggest thing that I wouldn't, I don't think I'd be able to fucking deal with, is is at this age is the lack of sleep. You know, it's ah. like the the nights of of interrupted sleep back when my kids were brand new and <coughs> sleeping like shit some nights and whatever. It was no big deal. You know, in your in your fucking late twenties, it's like, dude, it doesn't fucking matter. You can do anything. You know, mm-hmm. and and even well into my thirties, mid thirties, even late thirties, like I could take road trips where I'd drive fucking thirty hours straight. You know, and just slam Red Bull and slap myself and stick my head out the fucking window, Ace Ventura style, and and would drive <laughs> you know nonstop. And like I just can't do that shit anymore. You know, if yeah. I if I get a bad night of sleep, like my brain doesn't fucking work right. My my productivity is shit. I, I physically feel fucking sick almost. Like I just I can't imagine going through some of those periods of time when kids are are really young, where where they're not sleeping well, and it fucks you all up. And I mean, it, man, I just like that that would fucking kill me. I think. I think you got to keep drinking that mic drop coffee that you put into this cup of mine this morning, man. Dude, I'd have to mainline so, something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this will take all the pain away. Yeah. Forget about everything. And luckily, my wife's a trooper and does most of it. But you still, even if you sleep through it. Yeah, you're still waking up. You're still, mentally, you're still waking up. And last night, I was joking with her and I probably said the most fucked up thing I could. <laughs> Like, man, that baby's so annoying. And she looked at me. I said, it's okay. It's only when he's awake. <laughs> <laughs> She like, didn't fuck her. What? <laughs> she didn't talk to me for <laughs> probably thirty minutes. Well, how yeah. old? How old are you guys? How old are you, Steve? I'm gonna answer your question with a question. Well, you're gonna ask. Like, I, I know you're older than you look because yeah. I, I, I think we've actually talked about this. We may have. Talked I'm gonna about say this. 46. I, thank you. That's a good guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd, I'd put you, you know, early mid 40s also. But I, you're in your 50s. Right? I'm 51. Yeah. I'll be 52 this year. Yeah. So I was born in 1970. So. Oh. Damn. Yeah. You you're full- you're you're, you're, you're not as old, right? No, I was born in seventy nine. Seventy nine. So you're what forty two? Forty two. Yeah. I'm, I'm forty three. I'll be forty four in a few months. You guys are you guys are youngins, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I sure feel like it, Steve. Yeah. I'll tell you what. The, no, you, no, you feel I, like a youngin? I don't feel young. You feel old? I feel fucking old a lot of the time, yeah. Really? You you know you you do young guy stuff. I mean, doing this, you gotta have energy, you gotta be No, young. yeah, I mean I still uh, do young guy shit, but it makes me feel old after mm. it. You know, like I still, you know, do jujitsu and lift weights and fucking ride motorcycles and, you yeah. know, fuck around what and whatever and, and stay active, getting in a bite suit, uh, you know, whatever, like training dogs that are, are physically, right. you know, handfuls. Uh, but yeah, it's just like the way I feel afterwards now is what makes me feel old. I still do all the same shit. It's just even up until like 38, 39, I was, uh, I, you know, I would recover quick and, and right. still felt fucking young and virile and, and and felt honestly like my late 30s i'd say is probably when i felt the best of my life and physically you know like i was the strongest that i'd ever been right. I, like i was in the best shape i'd ever been even way more so than my my mid-20s or early 20s and uh like everything just i think muscle maturity and and years of conditioning kind of all came to a head and then when I was 40, I, I tore my left tricep uh, all the way from the bone. Like it, it took a piece of bone with it. Oof. And uh, and that was like a, a solid year of, of recovering from that. Like to get to full range of motion and then getting back to where I could even just do a push-up uh, range of motion and, and putting that amount of pressure on it. it. Like it took about a year to get to that point where I could really – do the same shit that I was doing before before it got hurt. Did and that it, affect you? And in, 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 do you it, think it, over, overall? I, I think so. Your, I, I, yeah, I do. I mean, because it was like for the first time in my life, I spent a year not doing a whole lot physically, you know, yeah. and, and I, I had never done that before. Like, I mean, all growing up, you know, teenage years or early, I mean, obviously in the Navy, I mean, but getting out and, and, and that entire scope of my entire life up until 40 years old, I was I was active all the time. And then for about, I don't know, five months, four or five months, like I literally did almost nothing. Uh, and then another five or six months of really, really slowly getting back into it really light. And, right. uh, you know, I mean, now at this point, like strength wise or, or weight wise in, in the gym or whatever, I can do all the same shit that I did before I, I got hurt. But But I think mentally it just kind of kicked me in the dick as well as it probably slowed my metabolism down and just kind of changed whether it's a, a CNS <laughs> thing or, or, I mean, I, I don't know what epigenetics maybe, but uh, like it just, it kind of changed 
me physically is that I, I, I haven't been the same since, you know, like I, I just don't recover as fast. I feel old. Like everything fucking hurts more. Like it, it just yeah. fucking knocked me on, on my ass. Old age, huh? Man, I, I remember, I can relate to it, not from the injury side point, but I, I think really nothing's worse than doing nothing, right? There's nothing worse for you than to sit around and absolutely do nothing for anybody. Yeah. Young, old, nothing. You ever notice people after they retire, you know, they worked all their lives. This guy's seven years old, 75 yeah. years old, and all of a sudden they retire and that routine that they had every single yeah. day they go down now hill. stops. And they start to deteriorate fast. Yeah. You see it a lot, man. I see it a lot. And I said, man, don't, why, you know, do what you like. Keep doing it. Because as soon as you stop doing it, yeah. you become complacent and lazy and sitting on the sofa doing nothing, be, yeah. you know, being a lard ass, doing nothing yeah. all day. It's probably the worst possible thing oh, for, for sure. anybody to do, particularly as you get older, it seems yeah. like. And I've always, I always like going places and having people say, like, um, you know, you look younger than you are or telling your age. And yeah. you tell, and I, I was always... For me, it was good. I, I think living in Japan for me was, uh, I learned a lot of lessons that maybe helped me in the sense of diet. Um, exercise too. In Japan, it's not like people go work out like we do. Like, you know, there are people go to gyms and do that stuff too. But every day, exercising is part of your daily routine. You get out of your house, you know, most people take trains. You walk to a train station. You go down, <coughs> you go down in the train station, then you come up escalators, you know, and you're walking and you're sweating because it's hot outside and you're, you're physically doing so. You're forced to do stuff by part of your lifestyle. You also don't eat the way we eat here. You know, we yeah. eat, we eat really unhealthy. Americans in general. Yeah. I think many people try to, but you know, we eat so much food and 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 overeat and you know and a lot of the wrong foods. And in Japan, I started appreciating you know about varieties of different foods, different colors of different foods. Eating till the Japanese have this thing about only eating until you're eighty percent full. Yeah, I mean, you stop eating at eighty percent. What is 80%? I mean, you get used to where that point is, but you don't let yourself get to a point where you're like, oh my God, I'm going to throw up. I ate so much. We do that a lot here. And I've tried to control that. And I think it, you know, it, it, it helps in, I don't know, maybe, maybe staying young or staying, staying, feeling good. And then the other thing was when I hit, I was 30 something, probably getting close to 40, like where you guys are at, right? I started waking up and my back started bugging me a lot, man. I wake up and I'm going to be so stiff. And I said, how do you... How do I combat that? And I was never flexible, right? And I was, I, I wasn't, um, you know, never really hard worked out. Did stuff. But I was in a marching band. That was, you know, it was about as hard of a workout as we did. And we we did work out hard, probably better than a football team in Wisconsin back in those days. But, you know, as I had a little bit of physical background and and uh, and officer candidate school, that which I do want to talk about after with you as well. A little yeah. bit of my experience there. But the the stretching, getting getting flexible, getting pliable is what. When I turned 40, I said, oh man, this is horrible. What do I got to do? I started stretching. I started, like, I couldn't get that. Now I can touch my toes. I jump rope. I, I, I less of trying to do a lot of hard physical stuff, more reps yeah. of lightweight, and then stretch and get my body loose. I sit there and stretch for a long time in the gym before I work out. And I found, I don't know, I feel like it makes me feel better, better just overall blood flow and certainly less of that, the recovery pain yeah. or that you were you were talking about stretching make being flexible now is uh, i think changed me for the better yeah. uh, in my training routine and now being over 50 you know hopefully i could stay flexible and avoid injury yeah yeah no it's important i mean it uh I, I, and i agree like as you get older I, I don't lift super heavy i mean i i, I can still still do that but i don't right you know, I, I don't ever go you know fucking crazy like i did when i was younger but uh, but yeah stretching is fucking huge you stretch I don't even work out. Like, are you going to partake in this conversation? You're just going to let me I'm, and Mike defer I mean, to us on, on, I mean, on the you, physical. You haven't stuff. shut the hell up since you walked in the door. <laughs> and by the, the way, what, by the way, welcome to Uninfluence. Yeah, welcome to Uninfluence. <laughs> now that we're, oh, hey, did we start the podcast? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we did. Huh? Yeah. All right, yeah. we're almost done, right? Yeah, yeah we're almost done yeah. with this. Well, we got to wrap this up. And we're uh, transitioning. <laughs> part two is going to be on Steve's. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I say thank you to you two guys? Too. We're probably going to talk about this on my podcast too, but I want to thank you guys because one, you were part of a of a large welcoming committee of people who, who were nice to me when I got to Texas, reached out to me. You invited me out to the um, studio, in, you know, at that time in your house. And I was impressed, man, with what you guys had and what you what you built. One, I was honored to be invited and, and thankful to make new friends in Texas and then talk to two guys who I felt 
like it was easy to talk to and we were like-minded even though we hadn't met before and even though i don't didn't have a cool beard still don't like <laughs> still working guys, on it looks like, like yeah i'm working on it man i got that give me, give me, it's only been a year and a half and you see i'm still working on it. all that rogaine uh, wore off. <laughs> the, I, I told you i stopped buying rogaine I, what am i what am i gonna grow a beard with now um but you know you invited me that and then you guys motivated me too so i want to thank you for that because you motivated me to to start my own podcast, which I did recently. And, and if it wasn't for you two guys too, I wouldn't have a damn microphone, uh, <laughs> um, anything, headphones or anything else to have started my own thing with. So thank you. All your hand-me-downs are, yeah. are the best. I've never seen so much equipment in, in a place like this. Compared to what I got going on in my little office, it's, it's embarrassing. But you motivated me to, to jump over and get into the podcast sphere along you know, with my YouTube channel and what I'm doing now. And so thank you, honestly, and for... for you know, inviting me and motivating me with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an honor to uh, to have done so, you know. Mm -hmm. Anything we could do to help and make new friends that are like-minded, that's that's what we do. I mean, that's all we care about. Yeah. I got asked for a, a magazine or something, an article someone's writing. Why do you do things with cars? And everyone expects me to say supercars. But that's not the answer. The answer is... I don't give a shit if you pull up in a shitbox Civic, you know. Yep. To me, your heart went into that Civic. You did everything you could to build that car. Yep. And we're like-minded people. If I'm driving a Lamborghini and you're driving a Civic, at the end of the day, we went to the same place, the same thing in mind, to meet people. Yeah, you're, you're passionate out. about the same things, yeah. you know, which to me is uh, is what's fun about going to a lot of the car meets. It, it may have been from the same guy asked, you know, why, why we go to them. Is that what you're talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah, I mean, my response was for the drive there. Yeah, uh, you know, but but that's an oversimplification of essentially the same thing. Is that I'm I'm passionate about driving. Like I fucking love to drive, and yeah. so for me, the actual journey there is is the best part of it. You know, getting there, it's it's great to, you know, uh, reconnect with all the guys that, that you either just drove there with or or that you haven't seen in a while, whatever. But but that same common denominator, I think that that's really why most people are there is because they fucking love driving. Yeah. You know, and so, um, you know, to me that that's kind of the essence of the whole, the whole genre or, or industry, supercar wise. I mean, yeah, there are some people that that just want want to connect or network or just like the flashiness of a car or whatever. But I think most people, it's, it's because they like fucking driving. You know, I'm with you on it. Uh, and but I will tell you, on the back end too, for me, it's that community, the people I meet yeah. everywhere I go. And the community and and the networking that I do and the people that you meet the guy with the Civic the guy the kid who has really no money who's working mm -hmm. a part time job but pounding out working on this car by himself meeting those people and hearing those stories for me I mean I cover a lot of that on my YouTube channel but it's not like I don't feel like I'm working doing it I go there I love to drive there I love driving a different car there of mine every every time and you know that the sounds and the smells and the experience and the the friends driving together and the smiles. But when you get to the, when I go to the car show, well, I notice my difference with you guys is you guys kind of sit down, put your sunglasses on and hide out a little bit in, in, in a corner. I, I got to usually track you down. And then when I turn around to come back from talking to everybody, you're usually gone. But I, 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 I really, really enjoy the meeting of the different people and then talking to people like, especially with Japanese cars, like why is this kid born and raised in Texas infatuated with Japanese culture to this point you know for the people who watch my channel they find that amazing what's the connection where did it come from yeah. you know did your dad teach you about Japanese cars did you grow up liking some part of that Japanese culture that led you to this car I mean it's amazing how many kids are influenced by Japanese culture Japan a country you know tiny little country all the way around the other world has, has had such an influence on it for me to look at that being with my connection to Japan and learning about what motivated these people to have Japanese cars or to have Japanese writing all over their cars or Japanese tattoos on them or whatever it is. It, it's, it's an, for me, it's an interesting experience to hear about that all the, and then, but the cars are what bring us together. But you notice what comes together is really an awesome group of people. Mm -hmm. And that's not just here in Texas, anywhere I go, really, it, it's, it's always the case, you know, in Japan, you don't even have to speak the same language, but you, you know, we're all car guys and you can bet that they're all, good people that are hanging out there, you yeah. know, community people. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. You Thanks. can definitely weed out the ones that are there for 
hey, look at me. Look at what I brought. Yeah. You know, they come in and it's like horn <laughs> those guys honking. guys show up a little late. And yeah. Horn that, honking. Oh, one of those. Uh, halfway through yeah. the show. Yeah, halfway through the show. I've got pulling up talking about, where y'all going for breakfast? <laughs> Bitch, we're leaving. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Still haven't had breakfast with you guys. <laughs> Yeah. Which is another fun part of Saturday mornings, I got to say, too. I do like the breakfast after. We, yeah. we usually stop and have have something fun to eat. And, mm-hmm. We and always look at the app and like, where would Steve not go? <laughs> yeah. Where's Steve that, not going to show up? Where we'll we're, drive through somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. To me, the, the breakfast is great except for about this time of year to, to October. I, I don't really like parking the cars in, in the fucking direct sunlight. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like getting into those cars when they're 200 fucking degrees. It's just, you know, with... With what you put into those and whatever, I don't like parking them in the fucking sun. But I, I, uh, I get it. So the pista doesn't stay out in the sun very yeah. long. Especially the pista is uh, like the the interior does not handle heat real well. Ferrari leather shrinks fast. Yeah, huh? like and just yeah. and the buttons get sticky and oh, like yeah. yeah, it's it's a it's a fucking bad bad. Scenario. Why hasn't Ferrari done nothing about the, the whole sticky button sticky thing? Sticky from that. They're, they're not. Oh, well, it's, p- it's part of why they're sticky. <laughs> oh god! It's when he lets me drive it. I'm like, God, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. <laughs> you put those tentacles to action. Yeah. Huh? Every, every ten of those buttons, yeah. you just hit them once in one shot. Bang, yeah. bang, bang, bang. Yeah. <laughs> sticky button. I, I think I think they have actually fixed it. I think with the the F8 and the SF90, the the new new yeah. generation of the of their tech, I think. Uh, they've sorted those those problems out, but I, I think the biggest thing is just most guys don't even drive their cars, let alone park them in the sun. Yeah, just yeah, mo- most of the owners don't don't ever put them in that that position. But I do. Yeah, my Ferrari sits out in the sun and baked, and now my Lamborghini does that too. Yeah do you do you have a preference of one over the other? I, I like them for different reasons, right? That Ferrari was a ballerina. If you had to get rid of one. Well, I got rid of the Ferrari, so the Ferrari is is gone technically. I did make a decision to get rid of the Ferrari for the Lamborghini. Yeah. I don't know. I like the Lamborghini is, you know, the bull, the the toughness, the balls. I mean, it's something Ferrari's beautiful and and Lamborghini's just tough. Yeah. You know, it's the bull versus one's the a ballerina. wrestler, one's a ballerina. Right, exactly. Yeah. How, how about a bullfighter and one's the bull? How oh, I that? like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. No light on you're light on your feet We're versus going a little fake ass wrestling. Yeah. Fake All right. <laughs> Not even Olympic style. <laughs> I'm talking iron claw bullshit wrestling. Fucking uh, <laughs> Nacho Libre fucking. Yes. <laughs> what about the persona of each car? They are very different, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Way I, different. I think it, the Lamborghini is that scarier kind of image or that tougher type of image, the uh, no bullshit type of image where the Ferrari is a little more. I mean, either way, look, I mean, I, I you know, to Ferrari guys, I destroyed my Ferrari. I had a wide body, yeah. on air bags, you know, wrapped with the Japanese rising sun on the hood. I mean, it, it made Ferrari purists, you know, throw up in their mouths yeah. every time they saw me. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Sometimes people will be filming for my channel and somebody sitting next to them won't do it. Now nah, that, nah, that's how you ruin a Ferrari. You know, you get that guy <laughs> coming in. I'm like, I'm leaving him on. Yeah. No cut on that scene. Leave it. Yeah. Um, it's great. Lamborghini guys, I don't think you get that as much, you know, like, Hey, you ruined the Lamborghini. Yeah. It's more like, you know what? I, I don't give an F. Yeah. I, can, you said you I can, can curse, fuck. right? I don't give a fuck. Thank you. By yeah. the way, I, you taught me that I can curse in this platform. Yeah. It's good. Um, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to do what I want to do. And, and you know, if you don't like it, go fuck yourself. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I think Lamborghinis are inherently flashier, you know, I mean, yeah. their, their lines are, they're yeah. a lot of even the, the factory stuff, like take the STO, like you can't get a Ferrari with that kind of um, options fucking spec'd out yeah. th- that you can with, with Lamborghini. And so I think that coupled with the, typically the people that, that own and drive them are, are usually a little more that way than and the Ferrari guys, I think for the most part are a little, it's more of that kind of like elegant, classy, like they Correct. just want to leave it alone, um, yeah. you know, and, and appreciate it for what it is type of thing. He's being polite, but my theory is most Lambo owners are douchey. Okay. And most Ferrari guys are like, you know, nice cool. put together. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, for real, how many Ferrari guys other than you do you see get out and be like, that guy's a douche? How many Ferrari? Can, can, you, can you rephrase okay. that? When you see Ferrari oh, people, they answers. normally look put together. Like, that guy's. Except me. I get out yeah, dressed like this. Except for, I would say, we'll go 95% yeah. of Ferrari guys. You see them and you're like, that's a successful dude. Like they look like they just got off the golf course. Yeah. Then you see the guy in the Huracans and the SVJs yeah. and all that. They pull up and you're like, what tech fucking conference did this guy go to and where did he rent that fucking car? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah no, there's oh, there's okay. a bit of that, like you know the like the entrepreneur uh, conferences. Sure. Like the, now there's a, there's a fucking ton of them where you know you get all these guys up on stage fucking motivating people to run their own business or whatever. Like it's it's that kind of yeah. kind yeah. of guy, I think. More more so than it is Ferrari drivers, probably. I like them all, man. And you know what? If I get no, that I'm little beauty vibe off of them, I like to just you know I'll go like I remember those guys at some of the shows show up in the in the newest Ferrari, the, you know the 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 Speciales, the the pieces, yeah. the real super rare rare cars you know the tdfs and stuff and shit i'll pull right up next to him in my car let the air right out and you know and yeah they, but i'll go shake the guy's hand and tell him he's got a beautiful car it's i think you know i my thing is now you get older be be nice to fucking yeah. people you, you know you know they don't like you go up and shake the guy's hand right? oh yeah and, that's and always it. the best and, and and you know what if you put him in a position what is he going to do he's still yeah. going to curse you you're going to love you but the, uh, yeah. oh, everybody's been open everybody's been cool behind my back who who, who knows what they say it's bad, Steve. Yeah, it's, 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 it's real bad. terrible. Thanks for, thanks for <laughs> reminding me. Like, I, I upset a whole that. group by calling them douche bros instead of lamb bros. The douche bros? Uh, yeah. All of them upset. But even the douche bros, okay? Yeah. I mean, It's still kind of cool. They're, they're cool, but who's really modifying their car to the degree that, that I have? Fucking nobody. Nobody. Right. Yeah, I don't know anybody that's modified. Very few already. people have done that. I mean, that, everybody, right? they just keep their car how it is, put wheels and a wrap on it. They don't cut them up, wide body yeah. them. You know, I know of a very few people with a Liberty Walk car. It takes some balls to do it, right? Yeah, with, yeah. I'm a little guy, but I, I obviously got a big set of balls. Yeah, you borrow them on the weekends. I, I sling them over my shoulder <laughs> when I'm in the in the in the, in the that Lambo doesn't have a lot of room. What inspired the uh, the North Korea Red Star on that fucking thing? So, I, okay, I love it. Now you're the second person who's now brought that up here. It's it's not the North Korea Red Star. It's nor is it the Chinese uh, Communist uh, Star. The red star on the hood actually was part of the design element to give me more of a, uh, in Japan they have these cars called Kaido racers and, and old Japanese customization ways. They, they implement that star, like a Texas type star mm. into their designs. I was into the black and the red theme, so I decided, okay, the star is gonna be red. Until it was on there, and until a couple people pointed out, said, "Dude, it looks like you got a communist star on the front of your, yeah. your car." Um, <laughs> I, I didn't think about it, but a couple of people yeah. in the video pointed it out too. It, it was purely, for design features and part of a Japanese traditional designing, certainly uh, did not try to make it look like a red star. But I, I uh, thanks for pointing it out. To me, I guess if, if you had the the red sun on on the hood, then uh, like to me, like for for most people, if they're not super ingrained in the culture and wouldn't know, yeah, you know, like mo most Americans or or even just Western people, generally speaking, they're gonna they're gonna differentiate that from a star. They're gonna think Japan or Korea or China. You know, right. a star. Most people are. I got the rising sun on the sides now. Yeah. That those come out into chevrons. So that's yeah. my American side of, of building into it. And then the hood. I wanted to bring that old school Japanese thing. It just the red. I think is what makes it appear more like a communist, uh, yeah. you know, or North Korean yeah. type of, of star, which could, it is not. You could throw one of those sweeping. The more you know, fucking uh, oh. swaths underneath it, and then it. To differentiate, yeah. yeah, maybe maybe that's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like the Lambo though. I made it a two wheel drive conversion, so it's a little bit more like a, a Lam uh, Ferrari in some ways. Yeah, I took out that that the the four wheel drive, the two wheel drive conversion, and it got lighter, got more, it got a little more like a ballerina than than the hard bull, you know. But I can yeah. turn now; it doesn't do that binding stuff that it does. But you know, there's nothing like that V twelve engine, yeah. that sound, that scream, yeah. I remember friend back in California when I first moved there. He he passed away, but Frankie Frankie had a Diablo, and uh, I remember his plate was a screamer, and I thought that was great. He was yeah. in the hot chicks too, so it was kind of a double <laughs> meaning of it too. Who's not in the hot chicks? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> was, Frankie was in had a lot of hot chicks, um, and and uh, he had some hot cars, but a screamer on a V twelve. Yeah, I thought that was a great name. Yeah, great. Yeah, name. no, that sound is fucking. Uh, you know, I mean the V twelve, whether it's in the Lamborghini or the Ferrari. It, Fucking V twelve is something else, man. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Plus, the last it'll be the last of, of ever anything made like that, right? I mean, probably, <clears throat> probably. So the Murcielago, you know, the Ferrari was. We're in this car market now that's crazy, right? Incredible. By mm -hmm. the way, do I owe you a thanks on on helping me um, secure the um, um, the Lamborghini as well? You've hooked me up with some people who are great people who helped me uh, finance it and do it. So thank you for that as well. I owe you a thanks on that's that. What we're here for? Mm, he I've got their cup here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I yeah. um, but um, you know the um, the the Ferrari. I put ten, twelve thousand miles on that car. Wound up selling it for thirty five, forty grand more than I paid for it. 
after yeah. two and a half, three years. And then the Lamborghini was another interesting story. You know, I went to, I bought that car in Houston. Mm -hmm. Found that car. I wasn't going to buy a car right away after I sold the Ferrari. I was going to take a little break. And How many and, miles did you put on the Ferrari? I put about 12, 13,000 miles on a Ferrari in two years. Yeah. I drove to Canada the first week with it, with Daily Driven Exotics. We rallied up there. We went all the way up the coast and all around Canada. Came back, drove it a lot. Monterey back and forth a bunch. And it was a fun car. It was a great car. Yeah. Uh, but to be able to sell a supercar like that, already modified to that degree for another 30 some odd thousand dollars more than you paid for it. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, you know, what's next? And the kid, my son, he's like, you know, we got to go Lambo next. There's no question. I said, all right, well, mom might take a little convincing for mom on this one to get it. And not more than a week or two after we sold the car, we, 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 the kid sends me a thing off Facebook. He goes, look, look what I found on Facebook. And he sends me this yellow, horrible looking Murcielago. Yes. Right. I mean, yellow. Right. You remember what it looked like? Yeah. It looked like it ran over, uh, you know, roadkill, right? Like mm -hmm. it ran over a, a possum somewhere on a, on a Texas <laughs> highway and it just splattered up and down the car. It was horrible looking. But... Uh, the car was in Houston. We reached out to the guy, and it was a little bit of funny business. The guy who owned the car sold the car to this other dude who was a little, I don't know, you know, it was weird, all right? And this guy had the car, but he just bought it. He had an open title, wasn't registered in his name. It was a, it was a situation that was like, I don't know if this is kosher or not. But I was like, okay. Uh, my son found a sticker on the window of that ugly yellow Lamborghini. It was a guy's Instagram address. I went to it. The guy's following me already. Hmm. He was a fan of my channel. Right? And I reached out to the guy and said, hey, bro, this car's up on the internet. It's for sale. What's up with it? He goes, I sold it to this guy a week, two weeks ago. He said he was going to keep it. He wasn't going to sell it. But if he's selling it, he says, I didn't know anything about it. But, you know, I said, I'd like to buy the car. If the car is a good car, can you talk to the guy and say, hey, sell it to Steve? So he got involved. He talked to the guy he sold it for. He said, hey, you weren't going to sell my car. But if you are, do me a favor, sell it to this guy. I like him a lot. He's a good guy. He wants to come down and buy it. He set it all up, put it all together. I went down there, bought the car, came back with the car, started unwrapping it unwrapped it to find I had the most expensive, according to Ed Bolian from VinWiki, the most expensive 2009 Murcielago coupe sold in, in the United States of America. It had custom satin black. Came, that was the first year you could do the, uh, the, 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 what do you call it? The uh, special order mm -hmm. on the stuff. Satin black paint, Nero Nemesis paint, racing seats, carbon fiber galore and everything else on a four, on a car that was sold in 2009 for $425,000 in uh, Las Vegas. God damn. That car, because of how ugly it looked in yellow with, with brown wheels, with that roadkill wrap, nobody looked at it. In fact, somebody just tagged me last week. That car with its yellow wrap got on, there's something on Instagram called the worst spec. <laughs> I won the worst spec with my car. <laughs> Thank you. People are tagging me, Steve's POV, Steve's POV. It was the worst spec Lambo. But it, it goes to show sometimes it's kind of like that ugly girl or the girl, you know, people thought was ugly back in high school. Yeah, that she, ugly with the big glasses and, mm -hmm. the, and the hair. Reminds me of the breakfast club or that, that yeah. girl in the back, right? And, you know, you couldn't tell, but, you know, you peel the, yeah. peel the uh, hair back and the glasses off and maybe you got some. My Lambo was, was a beauty That's hidden trippy. below a, a horrible. How many miles are, are on it? 22,000. Wow. That's not bad. That's fucking nuts. Can we put a man. picture of before and after? Hell yeah, you can. Okay. Well, put it up there, man. I'm, I'm proud to be the winner of the Worst Spec Award. And now I may get it back up on the site now with my new rap. Who knows? With the Chinese star, <laughs> I may make it again on the same car twice on the, on the same yeah. list. He sent me, I think I was at your house when he sent me. Dude, I, I got it. And he sent it to me. And I was like, mm, wasn't congrats. It was, <laughs> is that a fucking rap? That was my first response. Please tell me to. that's a rap. Yeah. God, that's yeah. ugly. Is that a rap? So what the all come around part of this story is this. I just bought another car from the same guy. Oh, really? Yeah, for my son. So my son, I told you, he graduated. He's staying in Georgia. And he's driving a, ever since he came to Texas, my kid turned in full Texan. He's got an F-350, 7.3 liter <laughs> manual transmission dually Fuck with yeah. a big ranch hand package on it. You know, a, a coal rolling monster, yeah. all black, black wheels, blacked out, murdered out. He drives that on campus. I'm proud of him in, in Georgia. They hate him. They absolutely hate him. <laughs> anyway, but now he's going to become somebody he's got to drive around to Georgia and he's got to go to work every day. And diesel has gotten, you know, six dollars and something ridiculous price. He's like, Dad, I think I want to sell the dually and I want something else. I said, you Great. Him, he says, I want something car. fun, sporty kind of car again, you know? I said, All right. And I remembered the guy who sold me the thing. He was in the yellow and, and wrapping things just ugly. Mm -hmm. Well, he had a Skyline R33 Nissan Skyline manual a transmission car that was oh, no shit. bright yellow just like that with with he he did the Fast and Furious stickers on the side of it yeah. with I mean it just didn't look good I called him up say were you thinking about getting rid of that car he says yeah 
I said, okay. He said, well, and we worked out a deal. I just had him deliver that car out. And I've got that car now. I'm trying to wrap that car from yellow to something Nardo gray or something kind of cool now. But got another car. Again, the car looks so bad. Wrong wheels, wrong setup, everything. But I got myself a beautiful, beautiful car for a great price. Yeah, that's awesome. And the kid's going to have an awesome car. Same. Yeah. So look beyond, what do they say? Beauty is uh, skin deep or something yeah. like that. Isn't there a saying like that? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm sexy as fuck under all this fat. Well, I was waiting for you to pull that shirt off and show me what you got going on, boy. I got at least a 12-pack under all this keg. Fucking pony keg. You do, yeah. you do look good, man. You do look good. I, I, it's, I'm, it's a lot of meth. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I got to get the beard going, dude. I've been you saying should. that. I got to get this beard it. thing going. Just do it. Yeah. I got it, right? Stop, yeah, stop talking about it. Just do yeah. it. Just, just start now. I mean, the good news is you don't have to do anything. Just stop shaving. Yeah. It's not like it takes work. It's the grayness of my beard. I... I I, I got a lot of gray now. I mean, I want to look young. You can dye it. Yeah, you can dye it. It's yeah. easy. And you to can do, do like uh, one of those touch of gray things where there's still just a little bit in there. Mm -hmm. So you're not. You ever notice it looks like it's not such a touch? It's more like a splash or a dip of gray. I, I I, don't know. It looks horrible. Yeah, in, I don't, in some I mean, lot of guys. I've never messed with any of that stuff, but, uh, uh, you know. I, I've seen some, at least on ads, that look like they, they work. Maybe it's total bullshit. Uh, that know. new soap that's going around on Instagram they keep targeting me with. I think I must have said the word gray once uh, when I had Instagram <laughs> open. Now I got this soap that you just rub yeah. in your head and it makes you, it turns. These guys got, got white hair. It looks like Anderson Cooper types. And, and two minutes later, they come out of the shower. They look like they're freaking <laughs> Rob Lowe or somebody from that's the, you know, from great. back in the, <laughs> in the 80s or something, you know. Yeah. Like, what? I just, I couldn't imagine walking out being all gray like that and walking out and saying, to your friends again like, yeah, who the fuck are fuck. you bro <laughs> you'd have to slightly do it you know like you got a gradual look like a right. fucking dalmatian yeah a right yeah. you spotted him <laughs> salt and pepper huh? yeah that's right yeah, yeah. yeah it's a sprinkle of gray but if, if you look at my wedding photos my beard is perfectly brown and fucking everything again and everyone's like man you've had so much gray in the past Marriage hadn't been that good for you now motherfucker <laughs> i was dying it for a year <laughs> finally i just got tired of fucking with it it is what it is, bitch. I got gray hair. It is. That's as we get older. It is what it is, right? Yep. Yeah. You don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about how I look when I go out mm -hmm. as much. That's kind of sad, huh? I used to, nah. to kind of care about that. Nah. I think it's uh, liberating. Yeah. Liberating. Yeah. Just don't give a fuck. Just don't give a fuck. Yeah. I like that attitude. That's how I look at it. I don't just don't give a fuck. I don't need to give a fuck. You Did know? you used to give a fuck? Uh, I mean, to be fair, I never really have given much of a fuck, but... But for the same reason. It's not because, like, well, now I'm older and I just don't give a fuck. It's like when I was 25, I didn't give a fuck. I, I wore the same shit that I wear now. You Do know? you give less fucks now than you gave back uh, then? or? Mm, I mean, probably, but I've never given enough of a fuck for it to really matter. <laughs> yeah. You know, so... The fuck's never added it's up like enough. Even giving less of a fuck, it's like I never gave enough for there to be less of, you know. That, but, okay, all right, I get it. I, I tend to always give a fuck. Try, well, I mean, within reason. I mean, to me, like with all that stuff, it's there's a lot of people who say, "Oh, I don't give a fuck," but they do. You know, to me, it, it depends on who who it is. Like, if it's right. somebody that I know know well, respect them, and trust their opinion, then yes, I absolutely give a fuck what they think about me. You know, if it's somebody that like I don't know them, I, I don't respect them. You know, or or I, you know, it's like I don't even know who this person is. Then no, I don't give a shit what their opinion is because it doesn't fucking matter. You know, and, and I think that's an important distinction to make. Because to, to me. There is an element of not giving a fuck that if, if you take that too far, then you're, you're just a fucking shit bag. You Correct. know, it's like you should give a fuck right. to, to the people that you care about. Like you should care what they think. Right. You know, because if, if any of those people like set you aside and be like, dude, we need to fucking talk. You're fucking this up or, or whatever the case is. Like if they have a, a strong opinion about you, then, then yeah, you should listen, you know? Um, so I, again, it's just like, there's always these like, you know, the subtle art of not giving a fuck, you know, ty type of mentalities or, or people take it so far. Like, well, I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. Like th there is a, a way to take that too far. And some people do, you know, I, but, um, I understand what you're saying and try to turn my phone off. I'm not playing with myself. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, sure don't look, not. I was not, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be judged. I if was you fixing were. to start getting excited. Getting excited. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get the peanut butter <laughs> out. Ready to pull that shirt off. Fuck, I was getting yeah. ready for it. That was all I, um, mm -hmm giving a fuck right or not giving a fuck i guess i mean do you guys do you guys care when people say negative things about you does I, I, it bother you i mean again if i don't know who they are then no you know um because it at the end of the day like that doesn't matter it's like if i don't know somebody well enough to have any respect for them why am i going to value their opinion 
you know, because they, they, they don't know who I am, right? If I don't know who they are, they don't really know who I am. So their opinion of me in, in that case, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know? that's a good approach to thinking about it. I, I it bothered, it, it used to bother me a little bit yeah. when people would say something or do something or, or write a comment on the videos or whatever it was. I, I say, as much as I said, I'd, fuck that guy, you know, I really don't give a shit or do it. It's, it's sometimes it was hard, I gotta say, you know, to hear it, but. I, got, I mean, I don't get a ton of it, you know. Maybe I will now hanging out with you guys more. You'll but, get uh, more, I'm sure. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> I hope you do. Yeah. But I'm sorry, can, you, can, I, can I call you guys for a little emotional support yeah. if yeah. somebody gets really mean? Yeah, I How mean, do to, you handle this? Yeah, I mean, to, to, me, <laughs> guys, yeah, to me, you, you can't give a shit about stuff like that, again, because that, that doesn't matter. I mean, to me, if, if it's like that, their opinion of you is going to have a, a net impact on you of zero, mm -hmm. right, other than what you let it have on you. Now, if one of your, your business partners or close friends or family members has a really, really shitty or negative opinion, then yeah, that's probably going to impact certain elements of your life. And, and so then you should give a fuck. Um, so I think that, you know, to me, that's just the clear distinction to make is that if you care what that person thinks because you, you respect their opinion, then pay attention to it. If you don't, then just fucking ignore it. So some hot pocket eating you loser in his underwear in his mom's basement watching my videos deciding nothing better than to just say yeah. negative stuff. Oh well, yeah. yeah, it's like a bunch but, of kids on Instagram with like zero posts in private and then they're talking shit about you with nothing. They yeah. have nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's like who gives a fuck? Yeah, I mean to, to me even if it's, you know, a, a verified 500,000 follower but I don't I have no idea who this person is, I equally don't give a fuck what they think. Right. Yeah, if you don't have the balls to walk up to yeah. me and be like, "Hey man, you know, I saw this and my opinion is still I'm probably not going to give a shit about no, I mean, don't e know e you. even then if I don't know him, I don't care. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think there's there's a, another important distinction to make which is the other side of that token is equally true in terms of not letting people that you don't know or respect or have any idea if they're blowing smoke up your ass, don't let that inflate your ego either. You know, which, which I think sometimes people do is yeah. that people get really big heads because they've got 30 million fucking followers yeah. that, are, that are, you know, stroking their fucking ego nonstop. And it makes them think that they're somebody that they're actually not, you know, so, so on both ends of those spectrums, I, I think that, that you have to, to filter out the white noise, good and bad, and not let either one of them, uh, detract or or impact who you are as a person and, and only worry about the people that you respect and care about. That's a good point, man. I mean, I heard a lot of people will say to me, you know what, we follow these other YouTubers and we stopped following them over this t period of time. And, and I said, why? So, well, I had an opportunity to meet them and they weren't, you know, they were dicks. Yeah. They weren't, you know, they weren't nice. I tried to, you know, my son wanted to take a picture with them and they, you know, they couldn't do it or they didn't do it. And then I sit and they say, you know, you're you're nice to people. You're, you're always nice. And I say, I I don't know, maybe it's because I'm 50 years old, you know, too, and I've been through, I'm not a 20-year-old kid who's just gotten a million subscribers who, you know, I, I guess it's hard not to have your head blow up and become a little bit crazy with, 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 with all the hype when you're young and you got money rolling in and all this stuff. I said, maybe because I've... I'm older and doing, I said, man, you took the time to write to me. You took the time to come up to me. You brought your kid up to me they're, I know they're nervous. They don't know what to say. I said, I, you know, I want to be nice to people. I don't, I, you know, I, I take pictures with their, I'm honored that you're taking the time to, to reach out to me. I mean, at least I could do is acknowledge it, say, thank you. You know, say, you know, thanks for writing, appreciate you, whatever. I, I think that's the right thing to do. But you know, again, I'm not at a level that some of these people are at by any means too. And I do also understand, you know, when you got millions and millions of people, follow, it's hard to be nice to everybody. It's hard to show everybody, give everybody the time that you want, you know? Well, it's, it's, I mean, I think it, there's a certain level where that's impossible, but right. again, I think there's a difference between, you know, being nice and, and letting it impact your, like you can, you can have a healthy boundary without being a dick about it. Right. Right. True. Uh, you can just, you know, you could be like, Hey, uh, I don't have time. Sorry. I'm, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, you know, but on the same token, like sometimes it gets misinterpreted. You know, I'll use myself as an example here, here lately. Like I'm a smart ass, right? right. I, I like sarcastic humor. Uh, some of that is, is a lot of it is influenced from the military. Like my, but my entire family, I've got two older brothers. My dad, we're all total fucking smart asses and, and we fuck with each other a lot. Yeah. All of my close friends, we fuck with each other a lot too. And, and, and oftentimes I fuck with other people in that same type of humor that gets woefully misunderstood you know and uh, and that happened here recently as as probably everybody watching or at least i know you guys are aware of 
you know, is that you, you try to be a smart ass and, and fuck with somebody and crack a joke and they take it personal and get bent out of fucking shape. And, and now you've got, you know, again, to your point, like all these fucking people that have this very strong opinion that, that don't have any idea who, who I am. Uh, but you know, again, I don't care on the same token. There's also people that send me messages regularly that, that are very flattering or, right. uh, you know, could, could drive my ego to, to where it, it's unhealthily enormous and uh and in both of those cases th those aren't they're not, they're not real you know because again like that none of these people know who i am even the people with a super favorable opinion of me yeah. it's like you know you're not there first thing in the morning or or last thing at night or when i'm having a shitty day or having right. a great day or just you know ha had an issue with a family member or a, a big success or a huge fucking kick in the nuts business wise or whatever and so um, I, I, again, I, you know, not to sound like a broken record, but I just think it's important to tamper all, all of the, the exterior or external opinions of you, both good and bad with, with a grain of salt and, and just kind of, kind of brush them off and don't let them get to you either way. There's yeah. another uh, element of this that we don't have control of, and it's the people watching or the fans who follow you, mm -hmm. me, us, or whoever, <clears throat> I think sometimes they form a, um, a relationship with us, yeah. you, yeah. That, that they've created themselves. They, they have sure. this image of who you are through the videos or what it is. Now, let's say, you know, they expect, they, they've created this image of you and they, now they come up to you and meet you and they catch you at that bad moment or they do it. And, you know, all of a sudden you've shattered this virtual relationship they've had with you you know mm -hmm. i've had people come up to me and say man i remember when you did this i said i don't even remember that yeah. or i remember you did, you know, guys who have watched so much they've they know my son they they know everything about stuff the stuff they even forgot but you're not careful with a guy like that i don't mean careful but you know let's say you he hits you at the wrong moment he comes up wanted to shake your hand he's been watching all your videos all of a sudden hey i'm sorry i'm, I'm kind of busy i can't do it right now bang that guy you could shatter that guy yeah you know, and all of a sudden you're the biggest asshole True. in the world to some guy that you yeah. never even intended to even try to. Yeah. To or you don't even know who they are, you yeah. know? And again, it's like, right. you, you don't know that, that they've followed you that closely for right. several years or, or know all these things about you that, that you don't even fucking remember or whatever. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, sometimes that happens, you know, sometimes I'll get emails that way where, you know, like I, I get enough of them to where, even though I have you know, an inbox manager basically that goes through everything and responds and, and what have you, uh, to, to certain, certain ones and forwards me ones that I need or, or whatever. Like I, I still physically and mentally don't have the, the bandwidth or the time to respond to every fucking message that I get, whether it's an email, a yeah. private message, you know, a, a whatever. And, and sometimes people take that really fucking personal, Yeah, you know? And it's like, again, here's where I would make the distinction. Like if I, if I know you and you're blowing me off or, or vice versa, if you know me well, and I'm just fucking ignoring you, that's very different than somebody I've never fucking met, you know, that, that I, I, you know, they could walk into a room and I'd have no fucking idea who they are, but just like you said, they feel like they know you and, and, you know, maybe they've supported the foundation for years or, you know, maybe they've, they've been a subscriber of, of my online training or they've bought products from me or, or whatever. But again, like I, I still don't know who you are, you know, and there's like this unrealistic expectation of, of this one way relationship that, that I don't even realize exists. And then they get, you know, really pissed off by it. And, yeah. uh, and that can be frustrating, but again, I, you know, I, I've been, I guess doing it long enough, you know, the, the first book that I wrote in the 60 minutes piece was all the way back and it's been almost 10 years now, you know, where, where I've had kind of that, where people know who I am and I don't know who they are and whatever. And, and, uh, you just kind of have to get to a point where, where you can separate th those two things, you know, again, it's the people, you know, versus the people that you don't and just put them into those two categories. Um, uh, how do you deal with all the people that, um, potentially staying at home pleasuring themselves oh, both uh, to yourself people? while they watch you. Yeah. <laughs> all, all both of them? Yeah, all both of them. Uh, <laughs> the actually, one's my wife. And, yeah. uh, and they come up to you and they, you I think actually about what they were doing at home them before with they... like a load. It's just on paper, you know, <laughs> old school. Yeah, go Dexter style and put it between a uh, two, two uh, do microscope mat drop, slides. Uh -huh. <laughs> mat drop, you know. Oh, just yeah, no. drop them something. No. <laughs> now, they, yeah, the persona people get of thinking – they become your best friend. Like we had one recently that got pissed off because I was busy doing other shit and I normally try to answer as many as I can. And he got pissed. Like he emailed me, Hey man, what I'm supporting fuck? you. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. yeah. 
dude, I'm sorry. I had a fucking kid and I didn't have time to fucking get on and yeah. answer all your YouTube shit. Yeah. Uh, it's not that we don't appreciate it. It's just, we can't stop everything. It's hard, man. It's, it's really hard you know, because you're dealing with somebody that actually, you don't even know the guy, right? You want, and he's created an expectation mm -hmm. to, to, with you. And now he sitting there saying, well, was, was yeah. Matt ignoring me? Why is Matt ignoring me, right? And you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not. But it, it's hard sometimes, yeah. man. And I feel bad for people like like that too, especially a guy who's a hardcore fan right now. Yeah. But it's hard to manage those everybody's expectations and what they what yeah, they especially think. as you get into the hundreds of thousands, into the millions, and all that. That's yeah. it's a whole nother level. And like then you some add people will tag tentacles, and now you got eight. Well, million. some people will tag me and then tag him on stuff, and I'll be like, <laughs> dude, he's so busy. Can you remove that tag? There's no way he's gonna answer. Like yesterday that happened. I was like, no way in hell he's going to answer that. Yeah. Just tag me and I'll go through it all. If it's important, I'll send it to him. Oh, okay. Well, I thought he did all that. I uh, know. Yeah. I, I don't, uh, like, on social media, like, I don't even go on Facebook. I, I haven't in a couple of years. Um, and, and even on Instagram, like, I don't uh, – go through the comment like i don't i don't read the comments anymore right you know I, I i just stopped doing it because i one i can't keep up and two for for the same reason is that like i'm i'm not gonna spend hours a day sifting through comments from people that i, I don't know who they are you right. know like to me if, if it's something where it's important enough to where you need to get my attention e email my company and and they, they will either respond to you with what you need or if if it's important enough to where i need to, to get it then they'll make sure that i get it you know, I, I just can't. I can't do it through fucking social media. Well, at some point, much, it, it becomes you know? impossible, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it just, is. It's just impossible. There's no, no, I mean, it's, it's mentally day. exhausting and it's unrealistic. And it's yeah. like, again, there, there's enough there now to where even if I sat here all day every day, I'm not going to go get to go through all of them and respond to everybody. Right. Right? I know how you busy know? is. I'm a customer of his for the dog food and everything because it's great shit. But if I have an issue or I need to slow shit down, I don't. Hey, Mike, I need you to handle this for me. Fuck no. I go online to his website and I email them. You send him an email? Well, well, not to him. Oh, I to, send oh, it to yeah, his I mean, company. That, that's with all, all that stuff. People are like, hey, man, I need a bag of food. It's like, well, fucking e email the people. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't, they're not in my garage and I'm not boxing them up, you know. You got so. some in your trunk, man. I was going to yeah. try to hit some up yeah. before I had a Y'all got any of them dog food? Yeah, left? I mean, I live close to him. I talk to him almost every day. I could easily be like, hey, man, I need some, something. Snacks. Yeah. So, I mean, so, sometimes, like, if I have extra yeah. shit laying around, he's like, hey, you got any fucking whatever? But, yeah. you, got any of them you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, he lives right down the fucking street. And, you know, so, like, when people are out of state, they're like, hey, man, you know, I, I need a couple bags of dog food. It's like, fucking go buy them then. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm but I'm going to write your website about this coffee, too, you should. man. You should. Uh, yeah. Should. We'll, sell, dog food. we'll sell you some. It's, I'm, just I'm an, it's just an espresso. Like, I don't make the coffee, Steve. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, it's damn good, dude. It's got me fired up. I gotta tell you. Yeah. All right. Well, then I do make the coffee yeah. since it's positive. That that is definitely my drop some good coffee. coffee. Yeah. That's some drop. I'm I'm about to do a drop. You are. Right. <laughs> I think this episode might be done yeah. soon. Huh? Yeah. I might need well, a drop. That is where Mike Drop came from, actually. Which I I said on one of my first Q and As, people wondered where the name came yeah. from. I was actually taking a shit when I thought of it. I. That is beautiful. And some of the best thinking time yep. comes during the drop time, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Quiet creativity. Yeah. Yeah. It's quiet, it's thoughtful, yeah. it's peaceful time. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's wonderful time. My Something wife trips more. out. I, I prep. Like, I take shit with me. Yeah. You know, like Snacks. A, like, my you phone charged. Yeah, I'm going to take... All right, I'm got a backpack if yeah. I can go into the bathroom. I'm going to be in there, man. Just grab an old yeah. school newspaper. <laughs> it's the, it's the <laughs> one place that most of the time nobody will come fuck with you. You're right. Yeah. You yeah. can get away with damn near doing anything in there. Yeah. That's where I do all my drugs in the back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, did I ever tell you about that? We did a job because we own a plumbing company. Oh, boy. Dude, I shit you not, my plumber sends me a picture. Do I need to work on this? He had pulled the tank off. Oh, my God. There's, It's packed with cigarette, old cigarette <laughs> butts so far and fucking Pop-Tart wrappers. So it's like weaved in behind the toilet and the wall. Pop-Tart wrappers and fucking Pop-Tarts and cigarettes? Cigarettes. How long do you got to sit in there to where you just got fucking Bob Darts yeah. and cigarettes? That's fucking wild. I will man. tell you guys, as you get older, you approach that 50 point. You don't want to spend unnecessary time on the toilet. That, yeah, that's then all you I stand you. up and your feet go numb, right? Yeah, you, well, and, 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 and you start growing these things out of your asshole that are called hemorrhoids. And, and, and believe me, as you get older, you, you don't want those. Uh, like long One Japanese wise man told me a long time, he says, listen, get your duty done quick and get out he says don't spend a lot of time and certainly don't do any other thing other than, than on, on that toilet you want to get in and out faster you're going to suffer confucius say right. confucius yeah. said yeah confucius said 
Well, if y'all want to see any more of this, we're going to continue over to Steve's POV podcast. And if you want to see his YouTube channel, check it out. There will be a link to both in the description. Are you going to spell my name right this time? Talk to the editor. Peace, right. bitches. <laughs> Is that an hour already? <laughs> yeah. Over an hour? Did we go all an hour? <laughs>